Welcome to Don's Manufactory. Today is test day for the epoxies. It has been a week since they were sprayed on this panel. First thing I did is I stripped all the EDP off with 220. Then I scuffed this side here with 100. It scuffed right here with 150, that whole middle section there. And over here, it's 220. And, you know, when you zoom in on it, there's some difference, but not a whole lot in the actual metal. So all cure times are done. Everything should be perfectly dry and ready to test. Uh, that's the haps here today, so let's get to it. Uh, this stuff sticks pretty darn hard, so let's just see what happens. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but the only thing it left in the tape was creases. Okay, it pulled the loose paint from where I scraped, but nothing more. Exactly the same. See if I can get the light on it. There it is. You can see the checkerboard there where it pulled the paint out right where I scratched it, but nowhere else. The 
paint came up where the checkerboard is, but it didn't pull anything out of the Okay, so Keystone, as you can see, I'll have to go back and look at the video to draw a conclusion on this, but there are dots there, 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 where the paint came off. So I'll have to look and see if I nicked it or something but I don't think so so that shows that the adhesion is not as good Now with the 150, here's a dot right here, there's another one over there. Well, that's nowhere near where I put the exacto knife. There's a spot right there next to the scratch where it pulled off. So, so far, 
this uh, keystone has the worst of all the uh, adhesion. So a little spot right there pulled off, just a dot. Looks pretty good down in there. What that says to me is that this Keystone 850 is more reliant on a mechanical bond uh, and less reliant on a chemical one. Well, I guess I'll do it up here on the flat. Okay, this is the easiest to scratch so far. But I knew it would be. Because it is not an epoxy. That's as good as the, uh, it's actually better than the, let's see if you can see it there. It's better than the Keystone 850. Wow. Hard to believe. Same thing again. Better than the Keystone. That on the 150 is as good as any of the epoxy so far under the same test conditions.
Yep, pass this test with line colors. We're going to just try to scrape the primer off using this uh, fresh razor blade. Wow. See what I mean about having the residual left? You scrape the paint off the top, but that residual is still there. If I keep going at it, I can get most of it out. But it is still there, and it is still holding on. Boy, look at that, how tough that is. That is amazing. Wow, amazing. So much tougher than I expected. Okay, let's see how this does. Well, wow. look at how it comes off, just clean as a whistle. See that? Comes off clean as a whistle, leaves no residue behind. So there's no mechanical bond there. No chemical bond either. It's, I mean, it's sticking kind of, but not much. This is a fresh razor blade, by the way. Each section will get its own fresh razor blade. Oh man. Look at how easy that peels off compared to the Rust-Oleum even. See, just comes right off clean. Oh yeah. Whoa, this is really tough. Well, look at the difference. This stuff, I can't even get it to go here. I'm scraping layers off. Let me get it down to the metal. See my first scrape down to metal, you can see that it's still it's still holding on. Oh man, that's... Oh yeah. You can see that it's not shiny like the Keystone it still has residual of the epoxy primer with a chemical and mechanical bond. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Wow.
Okay, once again, see you scrape it down to the metal and there is a residual of that epoxy primer still gripped and footed into the metal there. So that's really good adhesion. Yep, that's really good. Yep, that's yeah, really good. Okay, now in this particular spot, see it's still well footed in, but it's coming off a little easier than the MP170 did. But you can tell it's still footed in there. Now it could be because I have a little extra film, maybe this is thicker than that was. Interesting. It's not footed in as well over here. So the next test is with the DA just to see how it sands. I've got 220 grit paper on here and I just want to see how it feathers around here and what it looks like. This sanded the hardest, took the most effort to get it to come off. So the MP170, that is at the top, I think. Next in line is the Eastwood. It actually took a little bit to get it off. And uh, it, you can see how it feathers really nice. Well, I'll show you in the close-ups. So this feathered really good. And you get over here and it blew off pretty quick and it's showing those same chips i had on betsy and the rust-oleum took as much effort to sand off as the eastwood dtm and it feathers perfectly actually uh, of all the products it feathers as good as the mp170 
Uh, well, let's get a let's get a close up so you can see what I'm talking about about how it feathers. Eastwood DTM. You can see that it feathers pretty nice. So it's not coming off in chunks. It's just got a nice little feather. We get here at the uh, MP170. Same thing. It feathers really good. See a nice hazy feather around it. And still, wow, you can still see it. There's there's actually uh, steel primer stuck in the metal there. And over here, same thing. Now we get over here, and you can see where it's starting to get a jagged edge. And that is because when it's trying to feather, it kind of feathered okay right here and over here. But along here, you can see that it, started, it was coming off in chunks. And we come over here. Same thing, coming off in chunks. And here, it doesn't look too bad. It's a little better. Okay, and then we get over here to the Rust-Oleum. Really nice feather. Everything's feathered really, really well. So what's my conclusion? First off, Keystone 850, not going to use it. It just does not adhere well enough. And Betsy proved that four weeks ago now, I think is when I painted it last time. Wow. Would I use Rust-Oleum primer on bare metal like this with the catalyst and everything? Absolutely I would. The thing that would determine whether I would use it or not would be how the top coats adhere to this. So I'm thinking that if I'm going to use PPG products, they have a warning that it won't stick to Rust-Oleum primer. They can, you can have a reaction. Now I assume that's only true if it hasn't dried thoroughly because, you know, everything's geared towards a production shop, like a body shop. Uh, and they want to put primer on and then start top coating as soon as possible. Uh, because this is an oil-based primer, it would have to dry for several days before I would think about top coating it. But if I was using other products that don't have a warning about this primer, this, this uh, rusty metal primer has really good corrosion resistance. It has really good adhesion. And it, considering that you can buy a gallon of this for about 40 bucks and then it's another 20 for the catalyst this catalyst right here is enough to do a whole gallon so it's a 16 to 1 mix um, it's a real thick primer so it has to be thinned quite a bit so you would end up with a gallon and a half of sprayable material or close to that maybe only a gallon and a third for 60 bucks this actually makes me very happy because the entire underside of the Mustang was scuffed with 100 grit, treated with OSPO, and then shot with this primer. So now I'm not worried in the slightest bit that the primer will not have stuck to the metal underneath the car. It'll be just fine. Okay, next thing. So in, this, in the case of the color that I want to paint, I am going to have to use PPG, so I can't use the Rusty Metal Primer either. Okay, next one up is the Eastwood. Now the Eastwood is a one-to-one -one mix, so for the money you spend, you end up with more sprayable material. Like for every quart, you end up with two quarts of, mis of sprayable material stuff ready to spray um, although it does need to be thinned because it was going on just a little too thick and um, I would worry that if it doesn't go on wet enough it's not going to get its feet locked into whatever grit you sanded it with although in this instance it had really good adhesion and so it's a completely usable product I'm left with the MP170 as the perfect choice, but there's one last consideration, and that is 
the PPG has a two-day recoat window. The Eastwood is a three-day. So it takes longer to set up and you'll get a chemical bond between your primer and your epoxy up to three days later using the Eastwood but only two days with the MP170. The uh, Keystone 850, one day. And I wouldn't even give it that long. Uh, maybe half a day. And, but even then, the adhesion just isn't good enough for me. It's just not. The Rust-Oleum can be recoated at any time. I mean, once it's dry, it doesn't matter. Um, you don't even have to let it dry more than an hour if you're going to top coat it with Rust-Oleum products uh, because the Rust-Oleum products are also oil-based so you can just catalyze that and shoot it over the top maybe an hour later and you'll get a really good chemical bond between this primer and your top coat so that's uh, that's actually what the whole underside of the car is in fact in fact even the floor is also the same way it's been, uh, it was undercoated with the Rusty Metal Primer and then top coated with the Rust Oleum products. So now I really don't have any worries about the fact that I'm using Rust Oleum products on the car. Uh, no, it's not the most expensive stuff, but by these tests, uh, really good. Now I just have to figure out how I'm going to do the car. A two day window won't be too bad. In my order, you know, it's uh, Barry's sequences scored thing again. What I want to do is reseal Betsy, then shoot it with 2K primer. You know, I don't have to worry about the recoat times. If I get the 2K primer on there, then I can sand it for as long as I want. It can, I'll get a chemical bond between the 2K and the epoxy. So it'll be really good. And then I can just block and add a little more 2K at will, not worried about recoat time. So that's, that's kind of what I want to do. If I, if I shoot it with sealer, then shoot it with the 2K, I can let the 2K set up pretty quick. And within the recoat window, the two-day recoat window, the next day I can mask off and shoot the jams. So then the jams will be done and I can start pulling in the doors and the hood and the fenders and stripping them, hitting them with epoxy primer, hitting them with the 2K, and then hang them on the car. My main problem right now is we've got snow in the forecast. It's 45 degrees. I don't know how I'm going to shoot paint on this car when it's 45 degrees outside. I open up the door to vent the overspray and it'll just stop the reaction on the car. It's so cold. So I just, I don't know, I was thinking maybe I could fire up the furnace, run the heat up to 80 degrees in here, then do the final preps and open up and start shooting. And as soon as that coat is sprayed on, turn off the fans, close the door, let the furnace heat it back up to 80 degrees again. Something like that I might be able to get away with. It's just this corner up here by the door where the air comes in, yeah, that metal is going to get cold pretty quick. Maybe I need to do uh, wait till it's at least 55. Maybe I could get some fast thinner and maybe pull that off. I don't know. I can get it up to 90 degrees in here with the furnace turned all the way up. So in a way, I can sort of semi pseudo bake. Anyway, I'm still thinking about that. If you have any ideas, please put them in the comments down below. I just can't. I'm not a painter and this stuff drives me crazy. Okay, thanks for watching Don's Manufactory. Catch you later.